So I just want to welcome everyone to the Youth Advisory Board, the We Hope Coalition meeting for November 4th, 2021. Um, per the governor's executive order, we are still virtual with our meetings. Um, and I just want to share that this meeting will be and is re being recorded as we speak. So would anybody like to call the meeting to order? I can call the meeting to order, it's Pam. Okay. And then it is 7.08. So I just want to make sure that I just have everybody on my screen that's here and I don't miss anybody. So I have Kathy, I have Barbara Rue, I have Bonnie, I have Colleen, I have Sarah, I have Patrick, I have Pam, Eric, Eileen, Barbara Bellis, Maria, and Allison. Did I miss anybody? Nope. Okay, perfect. So if you guys um, would notice that I sent out the agenda with the, um, the calendar invite and last week as well. And then I sent out the meeting minutes from our September meeting because last month we were a little shy of a quorum. So um, we didn't have any official minutes for that meeting. But if anybody would like to make a motion or um, any comments on the meeting, uh, the meeting minutes from September 2021. I move the minutes be accepted as printed. I'll second it. All right, thank you. Um, and then our financial report, um, nothing has changed since the September meeting as of right now. We are still at $2,479.67. And with that being said, we can move in right into youth um, updates. Um, and I can have Patrick start with that. It works for you, Patrick. We, we started the, restarted the after school programs again last week. We ended up running the basic baking class the de-stress relaxation yoga class and continued with tutoring and the media center. They've changed it up a little bit. The media center is basically, Leslie's doing some activities every day there. Last week they did some pumpkin paintings and they were doing some coding, a little bit of everything. She's going in there with a specific activity in mind. And then the tutoring, they don't like to call it tutoring now. So it's the homework club. <laughs> and the, so it doesn't sound, I guess, tutoring people get the impression it's much more intense than it really is. It's really like an after school homework help. Basic baking is going great. They have, it's maxed out 15 kids with a waiting list. The yoga de-stress has three kids registered, but we decided to go just run it anyway, at least give it a start. And then the media center has about eight kids every day and tutoring is getting anywhere from five to 10 kids every day. I've been over at the school every day, just dropping in to check in on all the activities just to see how things are going. And I'm waiting at the school till the last kids picked up and signed out just for security reasons. So the kids aren't hanging out by themselves. We ended up not running the intramurals because there were just not enough kids the second time around signed up. We only had three or four per day. So by canceling that, we ended up canceling the extended homework help class that would start at 3.30 and go to 4.30 every day. So it's a little slow start the second time around, but hopefully in the fall, winter and spring, we'll be picking up because we'll start on time as scheduled without that little bit of confusion we had to start the fall. And uh, we we're also losing our baking instructor. So we're going to try to find somebody willing to step in to replace her because that's the most popular class. And we've promised people that they would be running through the winter and spring because a lot of kids who couldn't get in this time want to get in next time. So we definitely got to find someone who can run basic baking again. And additionally, we've also made contact with Eric Hennessy at the middle school and he's agreed to bring the uh, robotics class back too. So things are looking up for the future after the winter. Patrick, where's Emily going? I don't know. Oh, is she not, is she like going to be out of the district? No, nope, I don't think she's going anywhere. She was, she just said family issues. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't I, know if she was. I was I like, oh, they love her at the middle school. I know. <laughs> um, all right. 
Um, thank you, Patrick. Anything else you wanted to add? No, I think that's it. Okay. Um, I can do a little bit of further updates just on some youth um, and social service stuff. Um, JRB uh, starting to meet again in person. So we've held meetings, um, um, some follow-up meetings, and there's some new cases coming down the pike. Um, so we're just uh, working on doing intakes with that and connecting to resources. Um, so we'll just wait on some of those referrals. And then for social services, we will be holding our Thanksgiving um, our Thanksgiving uh, basket uh, food pickup with a turkey. So distribution will start on um, the week of the 16th. And we will have that um, and different appointments th throughout that week to pick up a bag full of uh, food and a gift certificate to go buy a turkey at Stop and Shop. Um, so, um, if any, if you know anyone that is in need and needs to fill out an application, please have them contact our department and, um, we still are accepting applications, um, probably for a little while longer. And, um, I know there's a food drive that they mentioned at the high school tomorrow for the game. And on Saturday, the first responders are doing a food drive at Stop and Shop, um, in Weathersfield, the Berlin Turnpike as well. Um, so... So those are good opportunities if people are around to uh, get the word out and to donate as well. Um, the, we will also be holding our uh, holiday gift program that'll be held on uh, December 16th, which is a Thursday. We will be doing it in person this time. So we'll set up our workshops for toys and um, we will have that um, go out throughout the day, um, socially distanced, um, smaller groups to go around and shop for the new toys. So we will be accepting brand new, um, new toys to hand out to youth um, newborn to um, 18. So if anybody um, would like to donate, you can call our department and set up a time to drop off donations. Or if you know any families that are in need to get um, presents um, around the holidays for their youth, please have them reach out so they can fill out an application. Um, we're holding it at the community center this year so we can use the banquet room and the fireside room so people can check in and space out accordingly, um, just, um, just so that we can keep it, you know, as safe as possible for everyone, but we know it's important to kind of have in person as well. Um, and then also energy assistance has kicked off and we are really um, busy with that this year. Um, a lot more households are eligible for energy assistance in town. So that's, um, that's really great news, but at the same time, spots are filling up for those appointments. So please encourage, if you know any families um, or um, you know, residents in town that could um, benefit from some energy assistance, please um, have them call our department and we can get them set up with an appointment. All appointments are being done via the phone um, and getting in their paperwork via mail and drop-offs. So um, we're trying to make it as convenient as possible for individuals. Um, in terms of, I'm trying to think if I had any other updates that, um, that's going on right, as of right now. I think those are the biggies. Um, Kathy, did you have anything that I missed or that Park and Rec are, wanted to share? I could probably mention that um, we've gotten permission to go in the schools with youth basketball and youth soccer. So that'll be starting up uh, as we get into the uh, winter months, um, a little bit in November, but then December, January. So that's going to be going good. And um, next week, we also have permission to open the indoor pool for swimming. So that'll be uh, for recreational swimming on November 8th with our regular pool hours that we've had in the past. The only thing we won't be doing this year is, well, this, uh, this season is swim lessons. Um, we still have to get staff trained because we lost some staff over COVID with getting trained to teach lessons. So we're looking to bring the lessons back in January. Um, all our teachers went back to college, so they're not around. So we're working on that. And um, so that's all good news that um, we're, we're able to do those things and everybody has been given all the protocols for being in the schools and doing things a little differently again to be aware of um, COVID, but everybody's, uh, we're moving forward with a lot of programs. 
good news. Uh, Erica, can you give us some suggestions for teenage gifts for Christmas? To tell you the honest truth, the best gift card, is, I mean, best gift is gift cards. That's what we've gotten feedback that all the youth want. We try to take in gift cards to like Walmart and Target. Um, and um, other ones have been like Kohl's and TJ Maxx and Marshalls. But Target and uh, Walmart have been the top ones that people have enjoyed um, getting for their, their teens. They're just very hard to shop for. Okay. Um, and I know as they get older, the items get much more expensive. Erica, it's Maria. I have a question. Um, you, the Juvenile Review Board, when's the next meeting? I know I had asked before when the next meeting of the Juvenile Review Board is, because I had someone which I shared with you who might be interested in being on it. Yeah, so we, um, our next one is probably, but we have a case hearing that day. Mm -hmm. um, well, I was gonna, it's probably, I think it's in the next two weeks. I'm sorry, I have a tired kid crying in the background right now. Um, yeah. So I apologize. We don't want to go. No worries. I'm ready for You're that. real. <laughs> You're not a robot. Um, so I apologize again, guys. Um, but doesn't want to go upstairs um, to get ready for bed. Um, um, yeah, so our next meeting, I believe, is in two weeks from today, and that is a follow-up meeting that we have with an ongoing case. With an ongoing case. Um, at that point, I was going to mention um, kind of to the group about we have someone new that wants to start, give the resume that you had sent over, and then I was going to contact her right after that. Okay, great. Thanks. See if Appreciate she'd be that. available to like come to our next, our brand new meeting. Yeah, that would be great because, new meeting. yeah, so she can... Speak, as they say. Yeah, absolutely. Forget, yeah, forget to be known. Yes, and she she's a, she'd be a wonderful candidate to come on board. Yeah, I have a good idea who it is, and she'd be a real asset. Yeah. So to be continued, but hopefully very soon. <laughs> Thanks. No problem. Um, anybody else wanted to share any youth stuff? Sarah tends to give us some good updates. And um, some of the folks from the schools and just parents in general that want to share any youth stuff. And then we'll get into kind of with Allison and Bonnie, some of uh, the drug free community stuff. Um, it's not directly related to youth, but a follow up to a question from last uh, last meeting. Yes, the mitten tree is definitely coming back mm -hmm. and it's actually going to be um, put out the week of the 22nd uh, because, you know, Thanksgiving is a little bit later this year. Um, the other thing that's different with the library is we did start our Sunday hours in mid-October. So now we're open Sundays one to five. Um, so that's kind of officially brought us to our full open hours again. Um, and we're still open after school. It's still kind of slow going um, with kids coming in because we still have to social distance and everything. But um, so far so good. And we're still on track to start in-person programming starting in January. So very exciting about that. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Any school staff um, want to give any updates or parents or just anybody in the community that wants to give any updates on any youth stuff or anything to share? Do we have any idea if the schools are going to run uh, vaccination clinics? I don't know that. I, I don't think so, Barbara. I haven't heard. Okay. Yeah, and I've also heard that they're going to wait and see how everything goes too. Okay. They're not planning it right now. Good question. I mean, student-wise, it's just really great just to have all the kids back. And, you know, it's just, we're still kind of getting used to being back and we're, kids are struggling with um, endurance and kind of being able to sustain for 90 minute periods. Mm -hmm. um, they're struggling. Um, but it's great to be back. So, you know, it's, there's, it's definitely us in the counseling suite are very busy. <laughs> As I'm sure you see the, the Hartford Current, you know, saying how busy CCMC is. Um, we're busy. We're very busy. Well, hopefully now that the students are back physically, some of the anxiety and the other mental health issues that go along with not being in school will diminish. 
Yeah, I think the middle school is actually sharing the same same um, same things, Pam. That they're very busy. The counseling department. There's a lot of anxiety and depression, and uh, high needs coming through with crisis. So um, keep that in mind and just keep a focus on it and let us you know let us know how we can be of help with anything. Um, all right. That actually is a good segue into kind of Allison and Bonnie being here as well. Um, I just would like to say that um, myself, Kathy, Allison, and Bonnie were at the last board of ed meeting um, at the end of October and went before the board to request um, another round of a survey to be done with the youth, the uh, Voices Count survey. Um, Youth Voices Count Survey and the board approved it. So we are moving forward with um, distributing that survey again, um, seventh through 12th grade. Uh, last time it was done was November of 2019. So it's been two years and we'll be able to collect, um, collect data once again, as well as Bonnie is great with um, kind of adding some great COVID questions in there. So I can let Bonnie speak a little to that as well, but there will be some questions added that are COVID related questions that'll help us get some more information and data for that. I don't know if you wanted to say anything about that, Bonnie. Yeah, you did a great intro on that, but <laughs> the gist is that knowing that youth behaviors and feelings changed in this time of COVID, even as Pam was saying, coming out, there's still a lot of underlying problems that may have developed as a result of that time frame or just change, life changing again. So we asked all the same questions that we did last time around substance use and mental health, including depression, anxiety, and suicide ideation. But then at the end of the survey, we asked some questions about were you feeling more or less anxious? Are you feeling more um, or less stressed or lonely? We asked questions about substance use specifically. In this time, did you use more or less alcohol, more or less marijuana, and then just general substances? And um, we need that because if we look at our substance use data and see that it's gone way up or way down, although I can predict that it will have gone way down, um, we need to be able to explain that in two years when it might look very different because hopefully our lives will be even more normal. Um, so we need to be able to measure if that's a, we can make assumptions, but we need data to back up our assumptions. So um, that's a nice add on there. I think if there's anything else specific, I don't think so. But one community who just did this survey in the time of COVID is establishing a very focused mental health coming out of COVID effort. And we're able to take the data and really package it nicely to be very specific to mental health to sort of plan and justify their interests, you know, to get additional resources from the powers that be in the community and certainly um, to determine how they wanna focus what they're doing. Thank you, Bonnie. Um, so the so the um, survey will be distributed in the in the upcoming weeks. We just have to set a time with the middle school and the high school. High school, it will be done during. I know it's not called advisory anymore. Um, it's called something else. Is any I can't I forget the name. We connect. We connect. Um, it'll. We hope and we connect. That's great. <laughs> um, so that'll be uh, distributed during that time. We're just coming up with the, the final dates and all that good stuff. And uh, we will get it out to the, the students and everyone's one-to-one -one at this point. So we won't have any issues with disseminating the survey via through their emails um, and getting the, the consent from parents and all that good stuff and the option to opt out if need be. Um, with that being said, I can pass it over to Allison. She has some great stuff she wants to share and some updates. Alrighty guys, is my audio good? Because I have like a dual monitor and sometimes it gets a little wonky. Nope, you're good. Cool beans, okay. Can I ask a question? I'm sorry to interrupt you Absolutely. before it goes no, on my go head. For it. Yeah. On the survey, 
Are there mm -hmm. survey questions, any of them directed towards special needs students? Sorry, muted. No, um, that's okay. So Maria, they're really more generalized to students. We do ask a question about what kind of grades do you mostly get, but that wouldn't necessarily reflect someone as special needs. Um, so the answer is no, th there isn't a question specific to that. That's I'll the first tell... time I've been asked that though. Yeah, the reason I'm asking that is I've read some literature with regard to the particular difficulty of special needs kids while they weren't in school like you can't their set of issues are a little different oh, um, because yeah. being physically in school gives them structure and routine the kinds of things that help them sure. to develop educationally which would not necessarily so a different set of sort of the impact of the pandemic on them might be and will be probably different than other students shall we say yeah i think that's a great point maria I, I can just add one piece to that. Um, and it, this is just a Weathersfield thing. Um, I don't know how other districts handled it, but in the last fall, I believe it was probably easily by October when we were still in the hybrid model, mm -hmm. our students with IE, our special ed kids um, mm -hmm. were allowed to be in school four days a week. So everyone, that's back when everyone was home on Wednesdays, um, our special needs okay. population could be in Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. So we we thank you. We shouldn't have a as big as other districts because we did that, but it it's still an issue. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but thank you very much. And I know it's always difficult to tailor questions, and you don't want to make people feel uncomfortable. But it is a concern because there's certainly ample literature, and there'll probably continue to be more literature on how the pandemic has manifest in certain populations. Yeah, I think it's a great point, Maria. And the survey really is at this time focused on behavioral health. So that umbrella of, okay. of social, emotional health as well as substance use. And that certainly ties in, but um, if I see data on that, I'll certainly share it with the group. Thank you. Thank you both. All right. So first thing I'm sharing is cause I wanna briefly touch on our mission and vision statement one more time and then kind of guide us through the current work that um, we're doing. So the coalition, we hope, which stands for Weather Field Helping Others Through Prevention and Education. I think it's important that we tie these in kind of when we start talking about we hope again so we all have a good understanding of like what we're working towards and what our goals are. So to create a safe and healthy and thriving community free of underage drinking and drug use and then to be a community coalition dedicated to engaging and mobilizing youth, parents, and community partners to reduce youth alcohol and drug use and to create a safe and healthy community. So what we're currently working on is our website finalization. And I think I have to, I'm not good at screen sharing. So please bear with me one moment. You should have full access. I think I gave you co-hosting, so you should have whatever. Okay. Um, so, as much, yeah. And here we go. I'm, I'm getting it. <laughs> no so, worries. This is our um, website design thus far. So when you first come onto the page, um, let me move that down a little bit. Okay. It's going to be the home screen when you first enter our website. So this is what you're first gonna be seeing. Our goal is to get a photo of our youth that are involved within the organization as the main picture here. But right now these are just like fill in uh, stock photos that the marketing team has available for us. Um, and as you continue to go down, um, there's a lot of very strong statements that kind of speak to who we are and what we stand for, which is one of the reasons why I covered our um, vision and mission statement. And then we go into elaborating what we hope stands for. So then as you continue going, once we get all of our resources put together, so this is just kind of like a, like a landscaping right now for everything, we'll be putting our resources 
under each of these tabs. So if you were to click on alcohol, you would get our alcohol resources, education, and what the coalition is doing. So all four of these would link you to a different page. And our next um, part of the website is how we can do or get people involved or an opportunity to get people involved. So they would put their name, their email, and um, it would come to me or um, we're gonna, since we have a new website domain, I think we have a email address that's associated directly with the website. So that would be um, where people would be able to get involved. We do need to get more photos um, of the youth because we are going to try and make it so we can get client testimonials, also get like um, teachers, anyone on the board to kind of put a Weathersfield vibe on it and make it very um, original, very our own. Cause these obviously are all stock photos and just random quotes right now. So you can see more testimonials and then the about us page. So this is gonna be um, where you can like click on the corner side and go to an about us. This is where you would find the mission, the vision. And then it breaks down to the work and what we would do. Um, again, as you can tell, this is all just very like space filling because we don't have the stuff to put in just yet. And then this would be a page of our board. So the people who are um, involved. So we'd have to get some nice headshots, kind of what your title is, how long you've been with us, and I think that's a great way to really show the community involvement and how we all come from like different um, professional backgrounds. And then some more for those that aren't in large pictures and like some of our youth, we can get put on here as well. Just keeps going. <laughs> Feel free to stop me if you have any questions. I'm not doing as good of a presentation as like Troy would do, but I'm I am I am putting in the effort. <laughs> um, and it so great. you're doing great. You're doing you. wonderful. It, it's just like Troy did it for us. <laughs> it's fabulous. Um, and so you can see we're tying in like the concept of the hand with. Um, and from our retreat conversation about um, bringing like power to the youth and like standing together. So that's been uh, really great. And these are what the, where you can like click off on those links on that first page. This is where like they would bring you. So we have it broken down like marijuana, vaping, alcohol, over the counter drugs, and then another way to get involved. So that is currently our um, our website. So then, new share. Oh, and that wow. will be linked to the town website. So this is its own website. It, it will be, be like yes, it will be on the website. So like when you go to like social news services and it shows what we like do, it sh it will be on the website. But it's it's its own domain. Mm -hmm. um, what was the next thing? Okay. Um, Actually, can I just ask a really basic question? Absolutely. Is the, the E and uh, we capitalized? No. Because it stands it for is, Weathersfield. So it's it is, capital it is W lowercase this. E. What? Mm -hmm. I've seen it capitalized in this. Do so you want to do some proofreading? So through here, dep is it capitalized? Where was it? In the beginning. Yeah, somewhere. A, yeah. In the beginning, there was something that had it. Yeah, in caps. I think yeah. the only reason why they put it in caps is just to make it really bold and pull your Got eyes it. to it. Whereas like everywhere else that it's like prefaced. Yes. It's not, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The but look colors how great that little symbol looks. The oh. colors are great. Right? The colors are awesome. They came together so well. I'm very excited to see how the community leaders comes together too. Really pretty. Oh, this is Scout's team, just all of their headshots. <laughs> and so then, um, speaking of that, give me one second. I'm about to pull up something else. Welcome, Janice. 
Okay. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. I'm getting the hang of this. Alrighty, so I'm going to be showing this. So speaking of those photos, um, I may need some help getting some of these testimonials done. So as I go through this, if anyone is able to possibly get a picture or have any ideas, um, I'm more than willing to share this um, at the end of the meeting so that we can get everyone kind of involved um, because we're gonna need all hands on deck kind of thing. So um, for those of you that are in the school, we need or want um, student testimonials or like pictures of students if you have pictures of students and we can see if they'd be willing to go on our website. Um, a parent within the um, within Weathersfield and a teacher within Weathersfield. Um, about us photo, they asked possibly doing like the barn. Um, however, does anyone have any ideas outside of just the barn for like a common Weathersfield location? I like the barn, but the cove is always good too. Mm. So a location for the photos? Okay, so we're trying to get, um, you know how there's stock photos on that website that I just showed you and they're just like yeah. random and they're not associated mm -hmm. with anything. So we're trying to get Weathersfield people, Weathersfield locations. So yes. like these are some like gentle topics or like ideas. So um, a student would be like the high school entrance which is like like a pretty place at the high school where you can take a picture at the high school and it's like identifiable. So like if you're at the high school often and you see something and think it's great, we could just like start taking pictures and see what we come up with, if you know what I'm saying. Does that? Yep, definitely. So should one of the kids be one of our board kids or any kid? So for the student photos, I think because it's going to be with a testimonial, I'm going to wait on like I wouldn't put a quote up yet. It would just be like a picture of a Weathersfield youth. But once we get a testimonial mm -hmm. from someone in, the picture would change, if that makes sense. Yeah, and is there gonna be a specific parent waiver for this group? Because um, yeah. at Weathersfield High, we can't have a kid's photo without the parent being okay with it. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, so we, can, uh, we can work on a photo release. All right, absolutely. Yeah, I, as can, as... I can coordinate that. Yeah, a photo release. Um, well, I can do a photo release, but I can also get the photo. That would be in. Yeah, if we have one for the high school or the school system that they use, that would be great. Um, I know we use some for like WEC and different things that we can pull from as well. But if the school has a template that we can use so that um, I can we have them. an electronic, um, we call it a biographical that a parent has to fill out every September or late August. And I'll just take the verbiage from that. Okay, wonderful. That would be wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, as far as so pictures, do you want to use Mill Woods? That's a good, that's a good location too. Yeah. For two reasons. Loretta's Dream. has a bunch of good pictures. <laughs> exactly. There's Loretta's Dream, which is great for photo ops. And near there are all, you know, courts and the like. Well, there's also Mikey's Place. Yeah. And um, I was thinking of the Keeney, but, and the reason I'm thinking of the Keeney is, you know, that fountain out front was in honor of volunteers. Um, mm -hmm. Ooh. And nice. uh, the stairway there has is a really cool location for doing some sort of group. Okay, I think I might reach out to I'm um, John Martin because he he helped with our um, our youth voices count video, and I'm sure he'd be willing to be. Well, where did that come from? It's weird. It does predictable 
predictable text now. That was strange. Um, I'm sure yeah, he's John, going to be a teacher photo guy. Absolutely, and maybe our teacher of the year too. Who was that? I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> I forget. <laughs> Do you remember, Eric? Do you remember? I don't. From from Highcrest. Yeah. Yeah, I just I don't know her, so I didn't retain her name. You know, that's okay. I'm sure I could look it up. Yeah. No, I think those are great ideas. Yeah, I think if the board can help us like hone in on some of these pictures um, and making it a combined effort of all of us trying to get the um, the website, you know, looking as much as you know Weathersfield we can, that would be wonderful. So you know, Eileen Candles, can I take a photo of Anna? Sure. <laughs> Permission granted. You know, a photographer we could reach out to might be George Savick, who's done a lot of Weathersfield pictures. Mm. And he's always posted. Yeah, so it, like they have the testimonial parts and then we have the about us part. So that would be possibly the barn, the cove, Millwoods, and then a contact. Um, they suggested the Weathersfield green. Mm. Great place. Or those trees, those beautiful trees there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's on the football field. They did put Catone Field on there, right? Um, yes, they did. That they put uh, as the second testimonial for the students. So it would be a picture of the student, and then I think it would be field behind it. And then it would be like the picture of the student and then a picture of the high school entrance. Hold on, let me pull back up the so is it like you want the actually the um, still shot of the landscape so that yeah. you can use those as backgrounds and then you'll oh, drop it really quick. So see this? Yeah. It's like yeah. Particular student, something that ties it to it. So like okay. the okay. teacher yep. and the classroom. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to show you guys something else because I thought you guys would really like this. Hold on. Oh, someone should get a really beautiful tree that is looking gorgeous right now or if any look at how they tied in weather's field so they have the high school then they have the barn and then they have a little ice cream that's cute isn't that great yeah mm -hmm. that's nice the attention mm -hmm. to detail is unbelievable they're great okay so we are purchasing apparel and this is what we got for the shirts that's cute. and then we are also going to be getting some sweatshirts. So this is where we're at with these right now. Which I, I think these are, I really like them a lot. What's the vendor? Who's the vendor you use? Um, Arm screen printing in Manchester. Okay. And okay. Well, I'm glad it's local. Yes, yes, yes. All right. That's good. And I hope that the the apparel has stuff that's more female oriented. <laughs> so we got unisex shirts and unisex sweatshirts. This just happens to be on the mail, um, okay. mainly just because that way there is no like like in between. It would it just fits everyone. Okay. All right. Um, next is we are going to be. Sh I just wanted to let you guys know that in. Um, I'm going to go back. Allison, just to circle back, just really quick. I'm um, sorry. I don't mean to cut you off. No. Um, the pit going back to the pictures and trying to get like testimonial, will you send out an email to everyone so that they can kind of have that, um, that, that I'm going to, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to share the Google docs notes that they sent to me and Perfect. I'm going to let Troy know that I'm sending it to everyone to kind of make it a moving and grooving document. Mm -hmm. I will probably do that um, tomorrow if that's okay. Yeah, Yeah. no, that's fine. And then they can kind of just go right like in. Fill in. And if you guys have ideas or pictures, honestly, you could upload the pictures right onto the Google doc. And then we can go from there. Perfect. Yeah. So and I can rec, um, Rachel takes a lot. Of, we have like a really I don't know if it's Rachel's camera, Kathy, or is it the town's camera, but she does a lot of really cool pictures at like events and stuff. So she probably has a lot to go through oh, that yeah, we maybe yeah. tap into or can ask her to like bring it in and us take some of those pictures as well. 
Yeah, we could definitely look at that. And also when people, you're aware that they've done the photo contest after over many years. And when people submit those photos, then the town gets to use them. So there may be a picture or two in there from past years that might look good. Certainly something we could look at. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And I have a I have a six and a half banker boxes of pictures of Weathersfield. I can see if I have any sort of landscapey tree building things. Awesome. I love this. This is all great. So then I would like to come and help go through the six and a half boxes. <laughs> <laughs> So we are going to be showing the Demi Lovato um, documentary. I don't, I don't know why this is playing right now. That's not what I wanted to do. Hold on. Rocket <laughs> Reason. Looks interesting though. So um, we are looking to show this documentary. This is what I wanted to. Okay. So um, this is a four part documentary about Demi Lovato and her overdose and struggle with her eating addiction and mental health. Um, and we sent out, I sent out a, premier, a parent permission form to all of the students um, and youth who are involved, but we're gonna be breaking it down into each four of the documentaries and kind of talking about it and going over um, like what we see in the video, the risk factors, um, any like preventative factors and kind of like digesting this. So I just wanted to put that on your radar for something that we're going to be doing um, with. Who are the students? Who are the youth? Um, I'm going to, I know their first names. I don't, I need, to, please hold. There is a couple in the middle school and then a couple in the high school, right? Yeah. I was just wondering where they, where the kids came from. That's all I like kind of. Um, two of them are J or B. And then two of them are from the high school. Three of them are from the high school. And I have one sixth grader. And how, how did you get the high school kids? So <laughs> over the summer, um, when all of the camps were going on, I just kind of went to the camps and like sat down and just started talking to kids and like asking them about themselves and making conversation. Eventually, some of them wanted to come join and some didn't. Right. Oh, one of them's Ryan Fazina, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. He's currently in um, theater right now. He has, he has like play um, practice. Yeah. So he hasn't yeah. come to many of them, but him and then Aaron Clark as well. Um, Nicholas Dimitrion. I don't know if I pronounce his last name. Erica might know better than I do, but thank you. Um, so, yeah. And so we're going to be showing that and kind of using that to guide um, our conversations. Also, we talked about doing a table at Holiday on Main um, with the youth involved in it. So I'm going to be planning kind of like a virtual meet with the kids hopefully next week. Um, so we could also go over doing the voice count survey video for the schools. And also, um, we were looking at like what our year would look like on the youth end of things. And the feedback I got from the two youth that attended this evening was um, doing a youth like team building activity or event kind of thing. And then doing an interview and resume skill building um, style. That's what they would be most interested in. So, so Allison has met, this is the second month, right? You held a meeting with the youth. Yes. So, so this one was more interactive, but less kids. So we're looking, Allison's been doing work to kind of get them, get build up the, the coalition of youth that's going to meet on Thursdays prior to our youth advisory board meeting. Um, they're, they've been meeting in person at the community center and kind of looking at to the group to kind of focus in on what's, what they would like to see and what's important to them. And then even more so once we get the, the youth voices count survey, um, we'll even dig a little deeper with doing, hopefully our goal is to do some focus groups with the youth that participate in that and additional youth in town to kind of dive into the data. So Allison, you're still looking for kids, new kids, right? That yep. they can come in anytime. Yep. And so is there any way, especially with Barbara here or Janice, congratulations. Like, how can we make this 
so that it's a club in some way, a park and rec activity, something that's broadly announced or just broadly announce it the way we would hear about other things. So I've hold it off on like really broadly announcing it too much because I want to have a few youth who know what the coalition is and like really focus on the quality of the rapport with them so that when we start building it up larger like we have these people who are associated with it and like can be like come join like instead of it being like a very one person comes occasionally kind of thing I want to give it some more meat before making it super public if that makes sense I mean we're obviously going to be branding ourselves but like I wouldn't want to be like come join this group and then have it not be do you are you following I think it makes total sense I'm entirely following (laughs) you want to develop the relationship with the few so they become ambassadors for the program quality before the quantity yep uh, just to give there, so Allison, the- w- once you're ready to share with a broad audience, the process pretty much goes like this. You'll you'll put something together. It has to be, um, if you want to use Weathersfield High as a vehicle, you have to get um, the superintendent to approve it, and then I can send it out to all kids, really. Awesome. Yeah, so our first like big push is probably going to be holiday on Maine. Like in terms of like, we're, we're going to have a table or hoping to have a table and have like flyers and stuff like that. And then when that time comes, absolutely. And I also like, I am glad that I've, I've met the superintendent now. So like, that's a good stepping stone in the right direction. Yep. Has any thought been given to reaching out to Corpus Christi? Because about a third of the students at Corpus Christi are from Weathersfield. And they do go up through eighth grade. I... Yeah, when, we, when we go to a broader, absolutely. Okay. We haven't even reached out to like any schools really yet. It's kind of been more of like, wouldn't you say, Allison, of more like, not handpicked, but more, you know, like a smaller Small yeah, absolutely. Kind of like anyone yeah. who was to hop on when there wasn't much defined yet because obviously we just got our like brand identity and we're still in the process of doing that so it was kind of like banding together kids who had interest and I've also learned that a lot of these kids have like no like or at least the younger one didn't have the dare program because of COVID so she doesn't know like any of the stuff like we did like a jeopardy game today and so it was like a like very interesting to see the dynamic i mean even the older of the group didn't really know much so it was like it it was an interesting learning curve so i think like working on making these youth to be good peer advocates when we get other peers in there is like what i'm focusing on right now That kind of covers that. We could always, even if it's like a a actual like group, we could even probably at some point talk Kathy about putting it in like the brochure, right? Like online. Oh yeah. Yeah. We can, we can use all the regular methods that we have. And that'll get blasted to anyone, you know, that uses park and rec stuff. And so, and a lot of our social and youth service stuff goes through that brochure as well. Um, So that kind of covers um, everything. And I've decided I'm probably gonna send out that word document or the doc tonight because I'm already on a roll and I'm feeling it. So I'm gonna be just woo, getting it out of the way. <laughs> Thank oh, you. Allison, yeah, Allison, as you're like looking to add more students there, not that you wanna pull from some other clubs and yet some of the students that are in other clubs could have wider spread interest or maybe this is going to speak to them more than what they're doing Mm -hmm. in some of the other things so like the two that come to my mind at the high school would be interact and would be um kenny lesser's leadership group right because you could have some kids Mm -hmm. who are both natural leaders and wanting to become stronger leaders and kids who are very interested in community engagement and involvement in interact so it it could be that like when I'm trying to envision, how are you going to recruit people at Holiday on Maine when people are buzzing around 
not that, it's not really for recruiting it's more so of just being like hey yeah. we exist like we okay. are yes. on okay. your radar now like okay. um, and well, we have, have like logos yeah will you but have candy great. and tchotchkes allison oh that is so the reason why i'm looking to do the youth meeting next week is so we can kind of talk about little like things that they think like youth would like that we could get our logo on um and then also i talked with Southington Steps and they had, which is another coalition under the same um, funding as us who have a bunch of cool little um, like swag. swag items. So we're going to be working on that. Um, and then also making up a brochure with who we are or like a quick flyer with who we are so that we get our name out there. We're still in the very like beginning foundational like pieces of this. So I may have mentioned this in prior meetings with this group, Allison, maybe even before your time, but the coalitions I work with that have a prize wheel, like the good old fashioned prices right style portable yeah. wheel. Mm -hmm. We well, have one. That was one of my first. We used it at um, a right. night out, national night out. Yep, we have People one. People love it, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. They did. did it with the dunk tank. So like you answered a question, you dunk Perfect. someone in the dunk tank. That's right. I'd forgotten you had that for that. Good, good. We're not doing that at holidays on me. Oh, who's who got <laughs> these wheels? Sarah. That's not yeah, so. Oh, oh Sarah, Sarah has one. Better. Yours is way better than ours. Ours is like scary looking a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that was used for a um, minute to win it. And you can, I'm like trying to awkwardly hold my iPad. So um, you can write in like, um, I guess yeah. like dry erase marker on each of the little squares and spins so you can kind of customize it. Oh, nice. The minute to oh. win it that we did today with the kids was you had to put a cookie on your forehead and get the cookie into your mouth without like touching it. And you had to use your face muscles. It's so hard, I couldn't do it. Both the kids got it, but I was just like, like a fool, dropped every cookie. All I can say about Holiday on Main Street is we did a, we did a booth one year and Nancy Stillman and I practically froze to death. <laughs> that's something to look forward to yeah <laughs> all right well thank you if anyone else has any questions feel free to ask or you could always email um allison directly or myself and we'd be happy to get more information to you or take any feedback or um any you know any type of info you want to get back to us would be great I really appreciate it. The, all the input with the photos and stuff like that that's going to make things a lot smoother. And I also think it's gonna make it much more web, personal to Weathersfield because I'm still kind of a newbie. <laughs> we'll get over it. <laughs> we'll, get you, we'll get you organized, don't worry. <laughs> Thank you, you did a great job. Great job, Miss Allison. A uh, quick question, the documentary, um that you mentioned and showed a little bit of, is mm -hmm. that going to be available online at some point? It's on so YouTube. It's broken. Okay. Good. Yeah. So you're more than it's honestly, it's like 15 minute little like segments and it's broken into four parts and it's really, okay. um, it's, it's really influential. It's, it's Allison, do you want to send that out with whatever you're going to send out the link? That would be great. Absolutely. Yeah. That'd be wonderful because I can think at least for me, send it out to groups of people that may be interested because yeah. you never know. I mean, the idea is to share the information, right? And you never know if someone is going through something that you just don't know about. Absolutely. And if it helps one person in the situation, it's worth it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys. Thank, thank you. you. So just a couple other things that I wanted to mention before we, I, I don't wanna keep you guys much longer because I'm, I'm aware that we're going on to an hour now. Um, we have two youth vacancies and I know Allison is really trying to see if maybe one person from like the youth coalition will eventually come on as a youth representative at our full coalition here. Mm -hmm. But um, I just wanna throw it out to the group that um, that will also just, I want you guys to keep it on your radar. So if you know any students that want to put wants to put their name forward to do so or to come to a meeting to see what we're about um and then we can put it we can i can direct them to like the town through the town clerk 
department with um, the, the different parties to put name forward. Um, so just to keep that in mind, we do have an open, I believe, no, those are the two youth. Janice, is it okay for us to say congratulations? Yes, it is. Okay, congratulations. Yay. So congratulations. Janice. <laughs> the ring is official, so everything's official now. Everything's Perfect. <laughs> Did you we want to say anything, Janice? We keep losing members to being elected. First Ken <laughs> Lesser and now Janice. That's because Good they stuff. start here and we get them. And Chris Healy. Them. There you go. Well, I've, all, I've said all along that um, personally, um, I couldn't lose because if I didn't get on the board, I still could be with you. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's, it's kind of bittersweet. Um, you can't have everything, I guess. So, um, that's, yeah, that's, that's my feeling selfishly. Um, <laughs> but generally I'm, I'm really happy to continue serving in, in, a, in this capacity, Board of Education. Well, we're really excited for you. So congratulations on behalf of the Youth Advisory Board and the We Hope Coalition. Thank you. Yep. And we know where to find you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Easy enough. <laughs> so we will have another position open as well um, coming up. So just to keep that in mind, everyone, um, just to keep our board as, as full as possible. I know not everyone can make every meeting and I completely understand just because of commitments in everyone's um, lives, but um, if we can just keep, if we keep our, our board full, then we definitely have a better chance of always having a quorum and getting a lot of this good work done. Mm -hmm. um, and with By that, the way, oh, go ahead. No, I didn't mean, I didn't intend to cut you off since we're talking about this um, and congratulating Janice, we can, can, I just want to congratulate everyone who ran, those who won yes. and those who almost came because you, to run is such an act of bravery on anyone's part. Um, so I just want to congratulate everyone. And I, I'm actually excited in the sense of Little Weathersfield, we got to see democracy in action. We <laughs> just add the recount numbers and I love numbers. One person, the difference between one candidate and another was five votes. Mm -hmm. So it re reaffirms what I've always said and other people smarter than me have said is every vote matters. Five is the difference between one candidate and the other. And how interesting is that? Uh, I'm just glad that people voted and the more people vote, the better. And the, hopefully more a lot of higher percentage of our youth are voting because they are the future and we can only vote our biases in our experiences, but I hope young people bring their own flavor of experiences and like, and hopefully they got involved and many did, and it was wonderful to see in our town. So democracy was alive and well. Mm -hmm. We got to see it in real time, which is always fun. And as they say, all politics is local. Yes. And I love your hat. Thank it has you. nothing to do with politics, <laughs> but I've been admiring, believe me. <laughs> You always have the best hats. I just didn't take it off when I came home. I don't know why. <laughs> well, thank you, Maria, for sharing that. Um, I do um, want to just give some other um, updates that we can maybe start thinking about. Um, our hope would probably be to bring back the Youth Volunteer Recognition event and the Abbott Scholarship again, if that's what the group would like. So um, we can start maybe in December, start planning out like subgroups to kind of work on those events. Um, and also, um, I thought it was really cool. Our fundraiser that we did last year, our fundraisers in the past have always been great. So maybe started to brainstorm some ideas for the, the, the winter, um, February, March timeframe to kind of do another type of fundraiser for the Youth Advisory Board. Um, um, just a thought to get some of those committees going and then hopefully we can have some youth involvement in those uh, those initiatives. Um, and just to be mindful that December's meeting, we will not meet the first Thursday in December. We always move it to the second um, Thursday in December, which is um, 
the 9th um, due to holidays on Maine. Um, we, we don't want to interfere with people going out and enjoying the evening um, in Old Weathersfield. So um, we'll, we push back our meeting to the 9th and um, hold it at the same time. And it will be virtual again in December, but we can um, talk at that meeting of what it'll look like um, and what people's preferences are going forward after the new year. That was going to be my question. I was wondering why we are still virtual when everyone else is in person. Yeah, we can definitely um, talk about it um, in terms of when we going forward. I know that our meeting space that we typically meet in at town hall is pretty small for this group, especially if we want to involve like youth and stuff. So we have a third um, meeting space going online soon that their uh, physical services is redoing that will be a little bigger that we might be able to access. Um, if not, we'll probably have to move it to the community center just so everyone can space out and be socially distanced. But I also would like to get the feedback of the group, um, you know, what that's gonna look like in terms of what people's thoughts are to have a meeting in person versus um, virtual come like January. I mean, I have to say, I, I kind of like the virtual meeting because it's less traveling around, even though it's just that, just in town. Um, there's something to be said for the flexibility. I, this is Maria, I agree with Barbara. I like Zoom because of the flexibility. And for some of us who go away during periods, it, makes us makes us available if it's in person it's hit or miss sometimes kathy what are other groups doing in terms of are they are they just going full-fledged back in person or are they waiting to get the feel of the group it's each uh, board or commission gets to vote on what they want to do it's got to be one or the other it's not a mix so you can either be in person or you can be virtual, but you can't combine the two. And every it's, I would probably say it's 50-50 if you look at it. Some boards found they got better attendance with virtual. Others felt they wanted that interaction being in person. So it's really, um, the policy came out where the board or commission can vote on what they wanna do. Okay. So probably think about it and then decide at your December meeting if you want. Yeah, I think that's a good option. So uh, we'll hold it virtual in December. Um, and then please come with your thoughts of what you would like to do going forward in January. Well, it, do we have to decide? I mean, could we decide on a meeting by meeting basis if we had to? I mean, say there was bad weather or some other reason we couldn't get a quorum in person, but we could get a virtual quorum. That would be very difficult to plan for because we have to get the room space. Uh, okay, so gotcha. That, yeah, that would make it a little bit more difficult. Okay, I didn't think Just about advertising that. the meeting in general because right. you give so much notice. Notice. A public yeah, meeting yeah. and stuff. It just, it would get a little complicated. It's all that FOI stuff, you know. True. Right, exactly. <laughs> People have to know where we are. <laughs> exactly. We're in space. <laughs> Everyone, please give it some thought um, and then we'll discuss it at our December meeting, okay? okay. Anybody else have anything they wanna add, share, comment on before we, uh, we get off for the evening? Happy Native American month. I'm saying it wrong, but that's what the month. Um, and there's a proclamation that goes with it. And happy, is it this Wally? I'm pronouncing it wrong. The, ho the happy holiday, the festive one today. Diwali? Yep, thank you. Mm -hmm. The one that I know a whole million of people schools. in the world celebrate. South Windsor schools closed today because of the holiday. I had never heard of it. Yeah, there was an article about um, Rocky Hill and Newington and another town looking at doing that as well, just given the population. Mm. It's also National Adoption Month. 
Yay! Yay! <laughs> Yay for that too. A lot of good things to celebrate this month. Yeah. Anything else anybody would like to share or anything before we, we head out for the evening? Everybody have a really great Thanksgiving. Yes. Absolutely. You as well. Yes. Yeah. A safe and cozy one and hopefully a little warmer than tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> One can be eternally optimistic, right? That you is true. Faith. Hey, there was a New Year's where everybody was walking down Main Street in shorts because it was like 70. There you go. So you never know. All right. Well, I think this was a very productive meeting and we will have even more um, accomplished with our, um, our website and everything by uh, next month. So by all means, if anybody wants to... Uh, Call the meeting. Um, so we adjourn. Second. Second. Oh gosh, you guys did that too fast. Who seconded that? <laughs> that was oh, you, Eileen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Great. And it's um, eight fourteen when we're adjourning. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Good night. Happy Thanksgiving. Good night. Happy yes. Thanksgiving. You too. Good night. Love the bear. Bye.